There are new faces, yes. So, yes, you can take this seat. You can sit here. So it's five, one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. And yourself here, yes. So, Kumail Bhai will come and join you here. OK, that's fine. Sayed will be here. OK. Now, this is for you here. It's Kasim, did you bring a mic? Yeah, you brought mic. OK. Now, Hello. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. This is what we discussed yesterday. For those who are absent yesterday, they missed the session. Uh, there are new faces today. So this is what we discussed yesterday. And uh, the whole uh, session will be online, inshallah, in YouTube. So you can follow. Yeah? This is a recap of yesterday's session. You remember this story? Yeah, who can explain us this story? Yes, Kasim, Sajad, sorry. Well, they were told to go in a dark room where an elephant was, but they was but they weren't told that there was an elephant in there. So like there were four people. Mm -hmm. The first person went in and he felt the belly, but he thought it was a wall. Mm -hmm. The second person, he went in and felt the trunk and he thought it was a snake. And then <coughs> the third person thought he, he felt the tail and he thought it was a rope. And the fourth person uh, felt the ear, but he thought it was a bird's wing. And they all had different answers because they didn't feel the whole elephant. Mm. So what is the moral? What is this story trying to tell us? That you take Islam as, as a, a whole. whole. Picture. Yes. Mm. You don't just choose and pick. Yeah, you just don't take bits and pieces. Yeah, if it is to pray, uh, then don't just take prayers. Or if it is to fast, don't just fast in Ramadan. You need to take prayers also. Mm. Yeah, prayers is very important. You don't need to rush in prayers. There are some people, they rush. They pray very fast. Or wudu, they do wudu very quickly. Yeah, in the time of the Prophet, one person was praying very quickly. Rasulullah said that if he dies right now, he will go to hell, to the fire of hell. The first thing he'll be just put in the pits of hellfire. Why? Because he was praying very quickly. Yeah. Or if we are in college or in school, wherever we are, if it's already the time of prayers has set in, if the teacher agrees to give us some time, we can go to the prayer room. I'm sure you must be having prayer room in colleges, in schools. Just pray there. Yeah, because especially these days, when they're short days, perhaps you reach at home, it's very late, sooner to qadha, or in those short days, in winter days, it's better to pray in school or in college. Yeah, and think that wherever we are, Allah is watching at us. Allah is there to look at us. First, we need to pray on time. Yeah, don't pray very quickly. Don't rush in prayers. Don't rush in wudu. And other thing is that wherever we have jamaat, it is better to pray in jamaat. Yeah, you can pray in prime time or you can pray with jamaat. But which is better? Agassistani says to pray with jamaat is better. To pray with jamaat is better. 
So if you have got opportunity of coming, like these days, these are the days, school holidays. You don't need to sleep also early, perhaps. So tonight is Shabbat Juma. What better than that? That you can pray with Jama'ah yeah, on Thursday night. You come join us. Yeah, because when you are in Jama'ah, your prayers are guaranteed. Allah accepts the prayers. Okay. We discussed this yesterday. Then we had a group discussion. That's the, we said that we, uh, we, when, we, when we involve you, you will learn. When we teach you, you'll remember. And when we tell you, you'll forget. So the best thing is to involve you guys. That is why we are involving you. And we'll involve you today also. Okay, these were the questions. And the last thing we did was that we, we gave you scenarios. There were four different scenarios. Each group uh, solved or discussed the different scenarios. Yeah? Now, today... Day two, Bismillah rahman rahim What are you doing today? Um, we mentioned yesterday that uh, there'll be time for questions. So Alhamdulillah, Furkan Bhai came early <laughs> and uh, he reminded uh, some boys here that you need to prepare yourselves and some, they took this trouble to write their questions on the papers. So we'll go through the questions. So you won't be embarrassed also. It won't be known who has written what. Yeah, we'll inshallah, if we can help, we'll help you. Otherwise, we can take these questions home. And inshallah, in next session, in future, or wherever we meet, we can solve if I cannot reply you right now, if it needs research or whatever. Now, today is a day of questions. We'll have group discussion as well, but let us solve these questions. Is it permissible to pass participate in the funeral ceremony of a non-Muslim if he was, for example, a neighbor? If my neighbor passes away, can I participate in his funeral? He was a non-Muslim. Can I participate? What does Islam say? Hassan? You think no? Put music on and music is haram. Like and what is it? So that, what do you think? Zain, do you have anything to say? Yes. Share with us. Um, it's good to visit the ill, so why not? Why can't you vin visit the funeral then? Good logic. If you are allowed to visit the ill, sick, so why not uh, participate in the funeral? Of a, of an uh, what you call of a non-Muslim. If a non-Muslim is ill, you go to visit him. Yeah, yes, it is allowed. Answer. If the deceased and those organizing the funeral are not known to have hatred towards Islam and Muslims, there is no problem in participating in the funeral. However. It is better to walk behind the coffin and not in front of it. This is what Agassistani says. Yeah? Question. Is it permissible to exchange greetings and gifts with a non-Muslim if he is a neighbor or a co-worker, etc.? See, uh, yesterday we discussed youth issues. Today also we'll have youth issues. Today it will be uh, interaction in social life. One topic was interaction in social life. Yeah. Yes, Sayyid Muhammad. It is? Yes. If he does not express hatred towards Islam and Muslims in words or actions, there is no problem in doing what is required in friendship, like being good and charitable towards him. Then Ayatollah Sistani supports his answer with the verse of Quran, of chapter 60, verse number 8. Allah says, Allah does not forbid you in regard to those who have 
not made war against you on account of your religion and have not driven you forth from your homes that you show them kindness and deal with them justly surely Allah loves the doers of justice so it is allowed there's no problem if it's Christmas you can tell them Merry Christmas Happy New Year you can greet with them you can exchange greetings there's no problem question is it permissible for the people of Ahlul Kitab and other non-Muslims to enter the mosques, masjids, and other Islamic places of worship like Husseiniya or Imam Barga, which are not masjid? And is it necessarily for us to enforce the hijab on those non-Muslim women who do not observe hijab and allow them to enter the mosque or places of worship. If it is permissible, yes, Qasim. So, do you mean to say that they cannot enter Imam Bara also? We agree that they cannot enter in the mosque. Okay, what about Imam Bara? Use mic, it's recorded. <laughs> you have to throw to somebody else. Okay, no problem. So Jad has already answered. We better give. What's your name? Ali. I think they can because um, if they're coming for like, um, they want to learn about our religion, I think they should be allowed so that they can even convert to our religion. So if they just want to come in for learning about our religion, I think they can. They can. They can. Yes, Hassan? They cannot enter the mosque, but they can enter Imam Burger. What makes you say that? Did you hear somebody? Um, I read oh, the under doors. Sorry? I read the under doors there. Yeah. You read the door there, Hassan. Or you can see it through experience. Yeah, in the weddings, what do we see? Yes, um, Kaim? They're not allowed to enter the masjid because that's a place of worship. And, and if they enter the masjid, doesn't because then... Yes. So the non-Muslims are not also allowed to go to Saudi Arabia. They don't go to Makkah and Medina. They can't go. Yeah? In Masjid al-Haram. They're not allowed to enter in. They Okay, so answer, let us look at the answer. Based on obligatory precaution, it is not permissible for them, that is non-Muslims, to enter the mosque, masjid, as for their entering the places of worship, etc., there is no problem in it. Meaning Husseiniya, there's no problem in it. If they're entering Imam Barga or a Husseiniya or a center without hijab, is considered as a sign of disrespect, then hijab should be enforced on the non-Muslims women. Sometimes you must have uh, noticed for interfaith, though for those who come for interfaith uh, gatherings here in Leicester, in our center, uh, whether it is Zara Center or whether it is that side, because I hold interfaith sessions also. So if in the previous interfaith session gathering, they announced there that next session will be held in Masjid al Hussein, example. So women are requested to wear their headscarves because it's a mosque. So uh, they wear. In, in short, even to enter Husseiniya, if there are some clothes which are disrespect, it's disrespectful, so then they should be enforced to wear scarves or to wear uh, decently. Okay. Is it permissible to harass a Jewish or a Christian or an atheist neighbor? Yes, Sajjad. No, because we're all humans and we're all equal. Yes. It reminds me of a hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says in al Balagha that there are three kinds of brother. There are three kinds of brothers. Can anyone help me? Yes, Azhar Jamil. Yeah, that is blood brother. Yeah, that's what Imam Ali says. So, that 
atheist, although he's an atheist, but he's your brother in humanity. Either he's a blood brother, or bro we are brothers in faith. Yeah. Then you've got a blood brother, who is your sibling, and then outside, brothers in humanity. So you cannot harass them. It is not permissible to harass them without justification. Okay, now it's time for group discussion. Yeah, I've spoken a lot. It's enough. Let us see what are the questions. Yeah? So, Alhamdulillah, again also, today also, we have got four groups. One, two, three, four. Yeah? And in each group, there should be five people. Yeah? So, you have got five here. Okay? You have got six. Okay. Now, let us see. These are the questions. Um, and uh, each person from each group should come forward and please uh, take the papers so that we start solving. You have to solve all the questions. Yeah. Yes, all of them. All of them. We'll give you 15 minutes for that. Oh. We'll give you 20 minutes. Okay. We'll give you 20 minutes. What was it? There was something which they which huh? there was a there was an ayat yesterday which did refer to in regards to this. Which one? Yeah. 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 No, 
not just to engage in it, but you know, to stay aloof, stay away from it. That's the first thing to do. Yeah? Well, we just said the whole thing. Word by word. This is true. Okay, so is it, is it permissible? No. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is a good question. I think you should ask any other question any other because I think you'll benefit everybody here from the plan. This is why we have that in our center. Dustin Wooderall.
where he had his hand up first. So let's all listen to him. When I read it, you've got to listen, yeah? Is it permissible? Okay, we blame Sajjad so was also reading it out. So it says, is it permissible for Muslim youth to accompany girls to study um, with him in foreign universities for walking together in vacation tours? So two students.
You've got seven minutes left for the discussion to get over till 11.45. So you had 20 minutes. The total time is 20 minutes, four minutes for each question till 11.45. You've got seven minutes left.
you done? You done? Okay, we'll come all together. Yeah? No problem. Whatever is fine. Yeah, you, uh, Ali should hold. Yeah? Where's the mic? I'll give you my mic. Baru Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Okay. Uh, the time is up, and Group One is here to explain what they have discussed. Bismillah. Um, for question one, it is allowed because charities are allowed by Islam. Um, if it's a Muslim person, then you can't have a doubt. But um, a chari charity doesn't have to be money. It can be clothes or food. So if you know that uh, it's a non-Muslim person and he's going to do a haram act by it, then you can give him food or clothes. And also, you'd get the wab because charity is a good deed. Uh, for question two, if you have an option of changing schools to an all boys school, change. If you don't, stay away as much as you can from haram acts. For number three, it's not permissible to do this if you know you you will lead yourself into haram act. And as the Quran says, don't go near zina. Uh, for question four, the the first glance is allowed, but if you look a second time or if you stare at the person, then no. Um, the action. Uh, the answer is in the Quran itself. Um, it's asking you to go to a mixed place or other entertainment places where there is a chance of haram acts, so it's not allowed. Oh, it, it, yeah, the answer is in the question. Thank you. Thank you so much. It looks like that uh, yesterday's session, you have understood it very well. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Group two. Who is the spokesman? All of you? Right, for the first question, it's yes to both answers because we are all brothers in humanity. And if it's done for the sake of Allah, there is a reward. Also, uh, Prophet Isa taught that love your neighbors as you love yourself. Question two, no, it is not permissible because it is, uh, in the Quran it says to stay away from things that are haram, including adultery, and the second glance to females is not allowed. And as for number three, no, because if we do it by our own will, it can lead to haram acts, and such as zina, plus we're not allowed to do the second glance to the opposite gender. Question number four, it's not permissible if you keep staring at it. But if you keep, if you look by accident, it's okay. But don't look again. Question five: It's not permissible because you don't know. Um, you might, you might engage in a forbidden act, and there's no guarantee. Well done. Group number three. Question one is, uh, yes, because um, all humans are equal, unless they are going to somehow harm, harm you. Question two is, no, because la tarikam zina. Um, question three. Um, Yes, it depends on the person's intentions of what he's trying to do. Uh, question four. Uh, if you look once and instantly look away, <laughs> oh, walk away. No, if you're if you're. If you know you're going to do a sin. Group five. The last group. Group five. Do you have a mic there? I'll give you. Um, 
For number one, um, yes, because you're helping others and you're being a good human being and you're getting good deeds. All right. Number two, um, we, we think it's not allowed because he is already making good now, thinking about it, and also it, it can lead to zina. Question three is, as long as you do not have any harmful intentions or making make any physical contact, it's, it is allowed. It's for study basis. Number four, not allowed because it's, it is better not to go near and better not to avoid it. It will persuade you to do it. Do forbidden act. It's not number five, not allowed because your mind will be provoked to do forbidden act. Okay, let us see the answers now. Uh, this is what you have discussed in your group. So, uh, these questions have got their answers, and these answers which we will provide you right now, it's from Ayatollah Sistani, Hafezullah Ta'ala Ali. So, uh, first, the first question was, just let us concentrate on first question, yeah? Leaving all other, the rest question. Number one, is it permissible to give charity to the poor among non-Muslims? Would a person get reward for this charity? Answer, there is no problem in extending charity to a non-Muslim who does not show hatred against Islam and Muslims, and who gives such a charity will be rewarded for this, for this deed. Those who fight against Islam, we don't buy their products also. It means that for those who fight and who have got hatred, you cannot deal with them in this, like, you cannot buy from them. You cannot give them also. That, yeah, now that is, uh, see, when we talk about fiqh, uh, these are laws. Okay, so it, it all depends upon a person where he has, what he has to deal, how he has to deal with. It depends upon the situation. You know, sometimes you want to show your characters, you want to change a person, or if not change, then you want to show your Islam. That is different. When it comes to fiqh, fiqh are laws. Because a faqih, a marja, when he did uses, uh, when he, he when he takes out a fatwa, a verdict, it is based on Quran, uh, Sunnah, that is traditions of Prophet and his holy progeny, ijma and intellect. Yeah, so he, he looks at all these four things, then he gives a verdict. So this is for him, and we all know he says also in his masail that if those countries who fight. Islam and the Muslims from those people don't buy also things and do not benefit them Yeah, so it reaches hatred to that extent or sometimes you call some people nasiri Openly people God forbid they they abuse our immas. They abuse Bibi Zahra alayhi salam. Such people according to Agassistani you don't eat their food Don't accept their invitation if openly they abuse Bibi Zahra openly do not then these are nasibis okay so there are some people they don't abuse openly they don't say that is different but somebody he comes to that extent he crosses all the limitations and that is where tabarra comes you know we may, we explain tabarra in ida zahra many a times because islam is not only tawalla it is tabarra also you get me there's another side of the coin there are two sides of the coin tawalla on one hand meaning to associate with Allah and those who love Allah and his holy progeny. And Tabarra is to disassociate from those who show hatred to Allah, his prophet, 
and his holy progeny. Quran says, "Laanahumu Allah fi dunya wal akhirah." Those who hurt Prophet, who those who hurt Allah and Prophet, on them Allah's curse be on them. Quran says, "Laanahumu Allah fi dunya wal akhirah, wa adalahum azabam muhina." And Allah has prepared for them a severe chastisement. For you, if they show hatred openly and they abuse openly, that's where this verdict come, comes in. It is, is applicable of Agha. You get what I mean? When, when they show openly, when they abuse openly, openly, a person could be there, okay, your neighbor, whoever he is, but he does not show openly. That is different. You get what I mean? A person shows openly, he abuses openly. Yes, Mahdi? Now, Jews also, there are different kinds of Jews. You get what I mean? Two weeks ago, I had gone to synagogue. I went to synagogue on Sunday, I remember. And I had a meeting with them. They were Jews. You get what I mean? So all Jews are not bad. They themselves, they gave an invitation. We want to work with Muslims. Fair enough. So you can't generalize. Remember one thing. You can't generalize. You can't say all Christians are bad, or Sunnis are bad, or Jews are bad. No. When a person shows hatred, when a person becomes uh, an enemy of Islam, there, the, then this verdict comes into being. Or is, that's right. Zionists. Okay. Yes. What? Yeah. Okay. I'll take this last question because then we want to we want to continue. Who, yeah, I've always, he has always he is, he is saying. Okay. Question two. Is it permissible for male and female pupil students in elementary and secondary schools to mix when one knows that this mixing will surely lead one day to a forbidden act by the male or the female student, even if that is just as minor and act as a forbidden glance? It is not permissible under the circumstances described in question. So it is not permissible. And many of you said it's not permissible. Many of you, all of you, I, I believe, I can recall. Okay, question three. Is it permissible for a Muslim youth to accompany the girls who study with him in foreign universities for working together in vacation, tours? Here, he puts a conditional clause. He says that it is not permissible except with surety that he will not commit a forbidden act. And if you are that strong, you get me? Everybody knows himself, where he lies. If you are sure, yeah, then you can go to these doors with Naam Ihram. You see? Okay. Question four. Is it permissible to look at a passionate scene taking place on the street? One group said here that it depends upon the intention. Uh, one person said it depends upon the intention. Yeah, uh, I don't. Know if, was, was was this? It was this question. Yeah, it was this question. Yeah, I think. Uh, is it permissible to look uh, at a passionate scene taking place on the street? Let us see the answer. Uh, it is not permissible to look as it at it with lustful intentions or without ill thoughts. Rather, based on obligatory precaution, one should refrain from watching it totally. And the last question is, is it permissible to go to a mixed cinema and other haram places of entertainment without having any guarantee that one will not engage in a forbidden act? You don't have a guarantee. I personally, I would say I don't have a guarantee. As a human, isn't it? Uh, we, I don't know what will happen next, next, uh, next moment of, mine, of my life. If I cannot guarantee myself that I'll stay alive, yeah, that's why we say, inshallah, yeah, this is physical body. What about our iman? See, the greatest gift which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given is faith. If faith is not protected, if faith is not protected, then it's very dangerous. Because this life is going to end anywhere. But there, we are going to stay forever and ever. بَلْ تُعْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ dunya. Quran says, you prefer life of this world, but hereafter is better. 
and it is everlasting. Hereafter is everlasting. So we need to work for hereafter. We have not come to stay here forever. We have come here to give a test. The way Quran says in Surah Mulk, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا you, you, you are blessed with death and life. It starts, it starts with death and life. خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that you are tested who is best in deeds. Now, is it permissible to go to sea beaches and public parks during sunny days for walking while one might come across sins which are against the norm of decency? Since you have already discussed now and you have known the answers, now at least you'll have got that experience. You'll have got that background. Yeah? Or, or at least to reply this this question. Yes, Hassan. Are you best not to look at what? Yeah, yeah, kind of. If your intention's ill, then you shouldn't go. If your intention's are pure, and then, and you know that you might come across it, then it's better to look away, like look at the water, look at the sea, or look downwards, and better not to look. I think if you can go at another time, then go at the other time, but if you have to go at that time, then don't look and just look down maybe. If he's going for walking and he concentrates on the walk and not at the scene, then I think it's fine. But if he just realized that um, the scene is, well, he might then then it's not allowed and it's wrong. Uh, you can just go to the other side of the beach. But it's better not to go to the beach. I don't think it is allowed because if we're not allowed to go to mixed swimming pools, this is a bit like it. And you don't have to go to the beach or the public park. Yes. I think that you just you should stay away from going to the beach or to the park. Everyone has said we're not allowed, but what do you do in a daily life, especially living in UK, when everywhere you go, there's a non-mahram non there and you're looking at them? That's how Jamil has got a very beautiful answer for that one, hasn't he? Because, like, you know, when you normally walk on the street, it's like, because um, like, we have to walk, because we can't like, stay inside our house like cramped. And when you walk, like, we don't like, um, go for it for, with bad intentions. We just see like, um one gaze and then like we do like um and we just continue walking because that it's like you know haram and we should be concentrating on Allah because like once yeah I like heard that like, there was a man and he went to your Maulana saying whenever I go to your market I look at like, haram um creations so like and I go there for that reason. So the Maulana said, Okay, do this. Um he told you the head coach you fill a wall of glass here, like to the um, four corners. And the man to go to a market and hold the glass, and he said, if you drop a single water, um, drop, my helper will have to beat you publicly. So then the man got scared, so he went there and came back without dropping a single drop of water. So the sheikh said, um, did you see any girls? And he said, no, because I was so scared um, I'd get beaten up. So the sheikh said, yeah, just do this, concentrate on Allah, and like, get scared for like the Akira, and then you won't have to like look at them. Or what you could do is, like, if you're going to a walk for a in the park, you could do what Imam Ali did. He would, <coughs> when he walked, he kept his, like, his eyesight. Uh, when he walked, he looked on the floor. Uh, when you see Imam Mehram coming, yeah, lower your gaze. This is our hijab. They've got their hijab, we've got our hijab. A hijab is not only of eyes, but it, uh, our hearts also have got hijab. So lower your gaze. Yeah? Even when you, when you speak to a namahram for very long, uh, then you need to lower your gaze. 
Yeah, because shaitan can whisper in our hearts anytime. And he's our open enemy according to Quran. We need to be very careful. Yes? Do you want to add? There's a hadith that says, um, you know when you're in a room with the Nama from there's always like shaitan over there. So yeah, but isn't like Allah also there as well? Like because it says three, only three people like are in there. Okay, Allah is also there. But who is giving the test? No. Who is, who is the, the giver of the test? We. The giver of the test. Uh, right now, we, who is tested? Us. We are tested, isn't it? Yeah? Allah, Imam Ali says in Nehru Balagha that when Musa and Harun, they went to invite Fir'aun, to come towards oneness of Allah. So Firon said, look at them. They came to invite me. If they are on the right path, then why don't they have pearls, jewels, birds, gems, gold, silver? They don't have anything. They went very humbly, Imam Ali says. Musa and Harun, Musa and his cousin, they went very humbly to Firon. And Firon was given priority and preference to worldly and material things. He said, we, I don't believe in them because they don't have any material things. Yeah? Uh, Imam Ali adds in Ejub Alaga. Imam Ali says that if Allah wanted, he could have given everything to Musa. All material things, pearls, jewels, diamonds, silver, gold, whatever. Allah would give everything to Musa. But he did not give to Musa because all, if Allah would have given, then all would have followed Musa. Then the test of